Um, this isn't a good one to choose because I don't think it's, uh, you know, as I say, I, I don't think Abigail's concerns are more poetic than political. Um, right. So I wouldn't want to sort of, you know, say something inaccurate that isn't one of her intentions. But, oh, wow. <laughs> heavy camera. It's uh, small but heavy. Yeah. Um, so this is, you know, this isn't a, it doesn't have a burning point to drive home. I think it's much more about just, you know, looking with a very sensitive eye and creating new images that are arrest, you know, arresting and poetic and make us look at things differently. I mean, you know, the Jack Russell, what, what, what more common ubiquitous sign of sort of home and hearth could you have? And yet she's, you know, made an object that makes you look again. You don't just pass it by and you think, gosh, wasn't it, you know, an extraordinary... And did that ju juxtaposition of a domestic um, pet next to sort of signs of blood and guts? Yeah, I think so. I think it gets its meaning through that contrast. But as I say, it's not. It's very. It's always very understated. It's not. It doesn't hit you in the face. You don't walk in here and think, "Oh God, I can't possibly look at it." In the way that, you know, someone might feel about Damien Hirst or one of Abigail's contemporaries. Um, it's understated, but it's. I think that makes it, you know, maybe even more powerful. Right. Right. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> I'll sort of uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll focus on you. All right. It's very dark, actually. It's funny the way that this light. No, it's all right. It's, uh... Oh, there you go. That's better. Brilliant. And now what I'll do is I'll just do some cutaways of things <laughs> um, to cover up all my awful shooting if I need to. Um, and it might be quite good to get in the Yeah. Yeah. This came from a, a real dog. Sure, do you want to? Um, yeah. It's, look, it's not really, it's lovely. I'm recording. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed. Oh, I'm so naff, aren't I? Sorry, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I mean, it was up to this dog point. Up to the dog? Yeah, oh God, yeah, don't worry, I'll, I'll check. God, I know, I, I mean, I, I never managed to switch the right button. Oh God, I just hope. Hang that again? Yeah, sure. That was so good. Give and me the question. Do you mind sort of, Yeah, what was the question? Oh, yeah. Um, so why do you think she sort of used, um, well, this concrete... No, I was talking about dogs and cat surrogates, wasn't I? Dogs and cat surrogates. Yeah. Um, I think part of the reason that this, this object is very uncanny, it has this sort of sense of being quite disturbing, even though it seems so familiar, is the way that you don't often see um, representations of dogs and cats. And this, this object has actually been taken, has been cast from a, a taxidermied um, dog, a dog that I hasten to say died naturally, um, but was subsequently stuffed. No Damien Hurst here. No Damien Hurst here. And and, um, but there is that sort of odd thing that you very rarely see do stuffed dogs and animals, dogs and cats, sorry, um, because they are very, very sort of similar to humans in a way. They become um, almost human surrogates that, you know, loved as pets or whatever. So I think that does account almost for its, its sort of deep sense of strangeness. Why do you think it is that um, she didn't just use a stuffed um, dog and she's actually kind of treated this one? I think if it had been a stuffed dog, it would have almost just been too close to life. It wouldn't have become art. And in casting it in, co in concrete, it's, ve it's really, really delicate. So although it's picked up some of the hairs from the inside of the, co the mould, um, which makes it seem very lifelike, it, you still know very much what the material is that it's made of, and it's in incredibly fragile. You sort of get the sense that if you were to touch it, that it might almost crumble away. It's, it's very dusty. Um, it reminds me of the one, um, the dog in Pompeii. Is that a stuck on That's a stuffed dog. It's um, it's um, foss basically fossilized. Oh, it's in, in the lava. Yeah. In the ash. Yeah, well, I think it very much has that sense. It's petrified. It's literally, you know, rooted to the spot. It's like Lot's wife or whatever being turned into a pillar. Of <laughs> so it has that, that sense of sort of life frozen in a moment, i.e. becoming death. Wow. Um, um, that's a really nice shot, by the way. I just oh. realised. <laughs> no, no, with you in it, I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... I just wanted to ask a general question um, about the ICA and stuff. Um, how do you how do you win audiences at the ICA? How do you steal customers, say, from the Tate and other places? Um, well, we do it through a variety of ways, and um, I suppose the principal one is to try and make sure that we have a really diverse program, a really Catholic program, so that it, it appeals to lots of different. Um, constituents. There's a lot of different people who may already be going to galleries or who may go very, very occasionally. Um, 
So we'll often work with slightly better known artists and then at the same time program much younger or emerging artists like Abigail. So, um, you know, someone might come to, 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 go, to come and see the bigger name artists, but they'll also then be um, exposed, will experience younger art, which might be, you know, may, maybe more adventurous or whatever. So, um, you know, we're not, in the, we're not in the business of becoming like the Tate. It's a very, the ICA has a very... Yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask a general question um, about the ICA and stuff. Um, how do you how do you win audiences at the ICA? How do you steal customers, say, from the Tate and other places? Um, well, we do it through a variety of ways, and um, I suppose the principal one is to try and make sure that we have a really diverse program, a really Catholic program, so that it, it appeals to lots of different. Um, constituencies, a lot of different people who may already be going to galleries or who may go very, very occasionally. Um, so we'll often work with slightly better known artists and then at the same time program much younger or emerging artists like Abigail. So, um, you know, someone might come to, 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 go, to come and see the bigger name artists, but they'll also then be um, exposed, will experience younger art which might be you know may, maybe more adventurous or whatever so um, you know we're not in the, we're not in the business of becoming like the Tate it's a very the ICA has a very particular program um, that we hope is is really different to every to everyone else in in London that has its own particular character and do you think you're quite accessible to everyone it depends what you mean by the word accessible um, I think I think I think once people know about us and where we are, it's difficult to have a very public profile because of where the building is situated. It's on it's on the Mall, very close to Buckingham Palace. So there's, we're slightly constrained by um, advertising and having big signs outside or whatever. But I think once people come and discover the place, it has its own, it has a very particular flavour, and they certainly come back again and again. Um, we, we you know we currently have very very big audiences, maybe 250,000 people coming through the galleries every year. So, um, from that from that point of view, yes, we have a very we have a very loyal audience, and we're always hoping to extend our audiences. But um, in terms of accessibility, um, you know, we tr we try and make the exhibitions as as open as possible, and, and try and supply as much information as possible for members of the audience who maybe want to know more background and more information about the artists and where they've come from, or um, whatever but I mean I think it is difficult because there's, there's very much a sort of popular feeling that contemporary art is very inaccessible per se and that's one of the things you know that we're here to do that's one of our main roles is to, is to encourage people to enjoy it you know it's, it's maybe not about being difficult it's actually about being enjoyable you see yourselves as um, fluxists fluxists um, well, sorry, Distributing the art through the world. <laughs> Massive. Well, not, a, not in a sort of proselytising way. I mean, we wouldn't want to be evangelical about it at all. But I think it's. I think. I think over the last few years, things things are starting to change. I mean, a lot more contemporary artists have become household names. People like Rachel White Reed and Damien Hirst. Um, so there's there's a, there's a much more greater openness to contemporary art, I think, and I, th and I think that's reflected in the way that over the last few years it has become more accessible. We've got artists talking about real life things, real life issues and ideas, rather than, you know, always painting abstract paintings, which I think a lot of people find difficulty identifying with. Great. <laughs> <laughs>